Before the younger Dryas Cataclysm, early humans lived with the earth and sky in a relationship that was intimate, trusting, and reverent. The stars moved gently across the heavens, the rains came and went with the seasons, the forests provided, and the rivers sustained. Nature was not always easy, but it was predictable, a living, breathing companion. The sun rose reliably each day, the constellations told the time of year, the world was a vast, sacred organism in which humans were simply another thread. But that world ended in fire. When the comet rose over the horizon, when fire fell from the sky, when the forests ignited and the rivers surged backward and the animals perished, everything humanity thought it knew about the universe was shattered. The heavens had betrayed them. The stars were no longer silent companions. They were harbingers of death. The earth was no longer a gentle mother. It was a battlefield. The forces they once trusted now seemed chaotic, violent, and unpredictable. In the aftermath, the survivors must have been profoundly traumatized, not only by the loss of loved ones and homes, but by the realization that the cosmos itself could turn hostile without warning. And so something fundamental shifted deep within the human spirit. Fear was born. No longer could humans merely observe nature. Now they sought to control it, to appease it, to build barriers against it. Across the world you begin to see signs of this change. Ritual burials become more elaborate, perhaps trying to calm restless spirits or appease angry gods. In the windswept foothills of Montana's Shield Mountains, the Anzic boy lay buried beneath a sandstone outcrop, untouched for over 12,000 years. When workers accidentally uncovered his grave in 1968, they had no idea they were revealing the oldest known burial in North America, a child interred during one of the most volatile climatic episodes in Earth's recent history, the younger Dryas. His short life, ceremonial burial, and the world he inhabited speak volumes about the early human experience on a continent reeling from environmental catastrophe. The Anzic boy was around two years old at the time of his death, and he was not simply laid to rest, he was honored. His body was placed in a red ochre-stained grave, surrounded by over 100 Clovis artifacts, fluted spear points, antler rods, and stone tools of remarkable craftsmanship. This kind of burial was not casual, it was a ritual, a spiritual farewell. The ochre, a sacred pigment found in burials across the ancient world, suggests a symbolic understanding of life, death, and perhaps even an afterlife. These tools, some of them stained with ochre themselves, may have been offerings to accompany him on a journey beyond. This level of ceremonial burial is a window into the complex culture of the Clovis people, the first widely recognized Paleo-Indian culture in the Americas. But the world around the Anzic boy was anything but stable. He lived during the Younger Dryas, after a period of warming that had begun melting the vast North American ice sheets. This cold snap, which lasted over a millennium, brought dramatic shifts in climate, with plunging temperatures, altered rainfall patterns, and widespread ecological disruption. For the nomadic hunter-gatherers of the Americas, this meant shrinking habitats, dying megafauna, and increasing competition for resources. The younger Dryas may have been triggered by a comet impact or airburst that ignited continent-wide wildfires and blanketed the atmosphere with soot and debris. Whether or not this hypothesis is correct, what is clear is that ecosystems across North America were upended. Mammoths, mastodons, and giant ground sloths, creatures once hunted by Anzic's people, vanished. Rivers shifted, forests died back, and tundra expanded once again. In this unforgiving environment, survival demanded adaptability, resilience, and innovation. The Ansic burial site shows that even amid environmental chaos, early Americans maintained rich cultural traditions. The care and ritual invested in his burial suggest strong social bonds, belief systems, and a sense of continuity, despite the looming uncertainty. Strikingly, soon after the Anzic boy's death, the Clovis culture disappeared from the archaeological record. Whether this was due to climate, overhunting, social upheaval, or all of the above, his burial may mark not only the end of a life, but the twilight of a people. In many ways, the Anzic boy is more than an ancient child. He is a symbol of deep time, of how humans endure amid catastrophe. His world was cold, shifting and full of peril, yet his burial reveals love, memory and meaning in the face of extinction. While direct evidence of mass human deaths is rare, as one might expect given the passage of time and taphonomic loss, 
the cultural silence in the archaeological record is deafening. Where bustling settlements and trade networks once stood, only ashes and silence remained. A few tantalizing fossil finds hint that human populations suffered heavily. In North America, isolated skeletal remains from sites suggest a dramatic demographic bottleneck during this period. In South America, ancient burials at Lagoa Santa in Brazil show individuals with cranial trauma and unusual burial patterns. In North America, forests burned to ash, megafauna perished in vast numbers, and ancient hunters watched their world vanish under darkened skies. In South America, great river basins like the Amazon were flooded and rearranged, while peoples like those at Lagoa Santa faced a transformed and more hostile landscape. In the Andes Mountains, glaciers collapsed, valleys flooded, and early human settlements were washed away. In South America, researchers investigating the vast pampas region of Argentina and Uruguay uncovered a curious layer of melted glass dated precisely to the younger Dryas boundary. These glassy particles showed signs of being formed under extreme heat and pressure, consistent with an impact event. Chemical analyses revealed that the glass was rich in minerals that had undergone shock metamorphism, a feature that can only arise during events like meteorite strikes. A few tantalizing fossil finds hint that human populations suffered heavily. In South America, the site of Lagoa Santa in Brazil offers some of the most intriguing evidence. Here, ancient burials such as the famous Luzia woman, and others dating to roughly 12,700 to 12,500 years ago, reveal a population that was robust, resourceful, and possibly reeling from environmental chaos. Several skulls from Lagoa Santa show unusual trauma, including depressed fractures and healed wounds that suggest interpersonal violence or accidents in a more dangerous world. Burials from this period also reveal hurried and sometimes disturbed interments, as if communities were being displaced or overwhelmed. Moreover, the morphology of the Lagoa Santa people, with their more archaic Australo-Melanesian-like features, hints that a very ancient lineage was struggling to survive amid rising floods, burning forests, and mass animal extinctions. But it is at Lapa do Santo, a key site within Lagoa Santa, that the most shocking evidence emerges, severed human hands and dismembered corpses, carefully arranged in graves. Archaeologists found burials where hands had been amputated post-mortem and deliberately placed over the faces, necks or chests of the deceased. Some skeletons were missing their limbs entirely, while others showed signs of careful defleshing, with fine cut marks scored into bones, indicating not random violence but a practiced ritual. In several graves, severed hands were posed like masks, framing the face in what seems to be a symbolic act. Radiocarbon dating places these dismembered burials squarely between 10,600 and 9,400 radiocarbon years before present, or roughly 12,500 to 11,000 calendar years ago, precisely overlapping with the younger Dryas boundary and its turbulent aftermath. Importantly, the forensic evidence suggests ceremony, not murder. These were not mass graves of the slaughtered, but painstaking, intentional burials designed to communicate something profound. Some archaeologists have proposed that these strange, haunting practices arose from social trauma, a direct cultural response to a world shattered by environmental collapse. In the face of overwhelming death, famine and displacement, new mortuary rituals may have emerged to help survivors process unimaginable loss. It is even possible that the severed hands and dismembered corpses symbolized the absent dead, loved ones lost to sudden fires, floods and destruction during the younger Dryas cataclysm. Perhaps when bodies could not be retrieved, when someone was swept away by tsunami waters, burned in wildfires or crushed under collapsing trees, communities recreated their presence through ritual acts. Severed limbs, fragments of the body, or even symbolic representations might have served as a focus for grief a way of holding on to memory in a chaotic and broken world. The hands laid gently across faces, the arms positioned in gestures of embrace or mourning, suggest something deeper than fear. They hint at love, remembrance, and a desperate attempt to reclaim humanity from the ruins. Thus, the severed hands of Lagoa Santa are not merely artifacts of violence or mystery. They are voices across the millennia, whispering of a time when the sky fell, the seas rose, and the human spirit struggled, and succeeded, in finding ways to endure. 
At the onset of the Younger Dryas, about 12,800 years ago, the evidence points toward Earth encountering a swarm of debris from a fragmented giant comet. Not just one big rock, not just one fireball, but a whole shattered cometary nucleus, hundreds, maybe thousands of large flaming pieces, sweeping across space directly in the Earth's path. If the Younger Dryas impact involved an object striking the ice sheet, or more dramatically, the Atlantic Ocean itself, it would have created an enormous shockwave. The release of energy would have vaporized ice, generated hurricane-force winds, and, crucially, produced a colossal tsunami. Imagine a wall of water, hundreds of feet high, racing outward from the impact zone at the speed of a jetliner. Coastal areas across the Atlantic would have been obliterated. Islands would have vanished. Rivers would have surged backward. The low-lying basins of Europe, West Africa, Eastern North and South America would have faced annihilation. Geological evidence suggests that the Mediterranean basin experienced abrupt flooding events during the Younger Dryas period. Layers of chaotic sediments, shell deposits, and underwater landslide scars along Mediterranean coasts hint at enormous wave action that cannot easily be explained by normal sea level rise. In South America, the mighty Amazon River basin tells a similar story. Some floodplain deposits date back to around 12,800 years ago and show signs of sudden massive inundation. Given the Atlantic's proximity, a mega-tsunami could have surged up the Amazon's ancient course, altering its hydrology and ecology for centuries to come. South America's highlands, particularly the Andes Mountains, also bear scars of rapid violent change at the Younger Dryas boundary. In the high Andes of Peru and Bolivia, glacial moraines show sudden retreat phases around 12,800 years ago, consistent with a burst of abrupt warming after intense cooling. Some researchers propose that after the initial Younger Dryas cooling, sudden regional warming triggered massive glacial floods, landslides and megafloods that reshaped valleys and left behind chaotic sediment deposits. Archaeological layers in Andean sites like Guitarero Cave and Kunkaisha suggest a disruption in human occupation around the Younger Dryas boundary. Guitarero, a cave used for early storage and habitation, shows a pause or break in stratigraphy consistent with environmental upheaval. Meanwhile, the Titicaca Basin shows unusual lake-level changes and sediment disruption during this period, hinting at unstable hydrology possibly influenced by tsunamis reaching deep inland via tributaries connected to the Amazon system. Even in the rugged heart of the Andes, it seems no place was untouched. The sedimentary records echo the same chaos seen in the Amazon lowlands and North American plains. Massive runoff, soil erosion, rapid sedimentation, hallmarks of an unstable and flooded world. Across North America, another ominous signal marks the Younger Dryas boundary, the so-called black mat layer. This thin, dark band of organic-rich soil has been found at over 50 archaeological and paleontological sites, including famous locations like Murray Springs, Arizona, and Topper, South Carolina. The black mat contains a mix of soot, charcoal, nanodiamonds, platinum anomalies, and high concentrations of microspherules, tiny metallic spheres formed in the fireball of an extraterrestrial explosion. Underneath the black mat, the bones of mammoths, mastodons, camels, horses, and saber-toothed cats are common. Above it, these megafauna vanish almost completely. The black mat then appears to be a boundary layer, a dark tombstone, marking the end of the Ice Age's great beasts and many of the earliest human cultures in North America. It suggests a sudden, catastrophic event that burned forests, killed animals en masse, and poisoned the land. Intriguingly, the same chemical signatures, including platinum group metals and carbon microspherules, have been found in black mats as far south as Chile. This strengthens the case for a truly hemispheric catastrophe. The very survivors of this event, the people of Lagoa Santa, the nomadic bands roaming the devastated plains of North America, carried forward the memory of the sky falling, of the world burning and flooding, Perhaps it was this memory that seeded the ancient myths of a great flood, a day of darkness, a fiery rain sent by angry gods. Perhaps it is a memory still buried deep within us today.